This morning on Capitol Hill, there is a significant shift in the balance of power that could affect the energy picture. A Republican won the late Ted Kennedy's Senate seat in the special election in Massachusetts. This victory could have a definite impact on upcoming energy and climate votes. Clean Skies Tyler Suters is here now to talk about the possibilities. So the significance here, Tyler, is really about the numbers because this really could impact um, the, the Senate's vote. Yeah, one particular number, Susan, and that number is 41, as in 41 Republicans now in the 100 seat Senate. Scott Brown becomes the 41st Republican to take a seat in the Senate, and that removes Democrats' filibuster-proof 60-vote block. So what does this do to the Democratic agenda? It's clear there will be an impact on the health care issues and the bills that the two houses are pushing back and forth right now. But also we could see an effect on the climate bill because unless the Dems can get 60 supporters on climate issues, they lose that filibuster breaking power. And so their agenda will have to shift in terms of the scheduling of these votes and the plans ahead. Now, what works in their favor is that energy and climate are not necessarily seen as traditional partisan issues. That is especially the case with cap and trade, which we expect to be the key to the Kerry graham lieberman climate bill that should come in the next several months. This is more of a regional divide than it is a party divide. Does that play in Democrats' favor, Susan? It does in the sense that it's not a 59 versus 41 vote. However, it may be more muddy and they may actually have fewer numbers than that when it comes down to cap and Right. Trade. Now, even before this vote happened, there was one Democrat, we had talked about this yesterday, that has big doubts about a climate vote at all this year. Exactly. This is Byron Dorgan. I heard him speak yesterday. He is the number two Democrat on the Senate Energy Committee. And yesterday he says, in his opinion, quote, it will be very hard to turn to a climate bill in the wake of health Healthcare. He added that he thinks it's more compelling to take up an energy bill that addresses clean energy issues. And the Acela bill, which passed out of his energy committee back in June, does exactly that. Now, remember the plan that Harry Reid has in mind. He wants to combine the climate bill and last summer's energy bill, the Acela bill, into a single plan and have one single Senate floor vote on those two combined issues. In the wake of Senator Dorgan's comments yesterday, I talked to the majority leader's office. It says that Reid is standing by his energy and climate plan. Recently, Reid was speaking at a geothermal event in New York, and he made these comments just last week. He says that the Waxman-Markey House bill is a comprehensive clean energy and climate bill that does many of these things regarding clean energy. I support addressing each of these issues in the Senate's version, and I expect that to happen this spring. Reid continued in his speech, we have a lot on our plate, but we are not so busy that we can't find the time to address comprehensive energy and climate legislation. Susan, the bottom line here, the majority leader still holds the cards, no matter what the numbers are for Republicans and Democrats and that 60 vote block. Right, So, but does losing that 60th vote affect his at least schedule for bringing this combined bill out? I, I think it may when you look at the comments from both sides in the wake of yesterday's election. Now, take, for example, Senator Robert Menendez of New Jersey. He is head of the Senate Democrats campaign committee. He said after Scott Brown's victory yesterday, quoting now, there was a lot of anxiety in the country right now, Americans are understandably impatient. It seems that he clearly has one eye on the midterm elections, which are coming up in 10 months. And this brings up the issue that if Scott Brown won that Senate seat in Massachusetts by opposing health care and by opposing more spending, can some of the other dark horse candidates, most of them Republicans, if not all of them, can they win upset victories by opposing cap and trade this fall? Take a look at the departing senators. Two relatively safe seats. Well, I should say one relatively safe seat. That is Byron Dorgan and one man that was trailing in the polls, an incumbent that is Chris out of Connecticut. Both Democrats, one is a maybe vote on cap and trade, that is Dorgan. The other was a yes vote. Chris Dodd was a yes. They are both retiring, leaving their seats. Overall, even the divide here, 18 Democrats and 18 Republicans are defending Senate seats this fall. And Michael Steele, the GOP chairman, clearly happy about last night's victory, said, slow it down. That's the message he gets from voters slow it down. The question now is, will Harry Reid reach for the accelerator on this climate issue, or is he going to reach for the brakes to help the midterm elections that are coming up and those candidates who are in need. Absolutely. All right, so tell us about Cape Wind. Was it a factor in this election? Because it is one of the major energy issues in Massachusetts. Very controversial, of course. Uh, what we're talking about, Susan, the Cape Wind Project, 130 turbines planned for a wind farm near Cape Cod and Nantucket, just off the coast of Massachusetts there. And the candidates in the Senate election actually took opposing sides on this project. The victor, Republican Scott Brown, was against the plan. He cited location concerns. Democrat Martha Coakley was for Cape Wind. She cited the clean energy needs of the country, and that stance is opposite of Ted Kennedy. He was, in fact, a very strong and vocal opponent of the Cape Wind project.
Now today we heard from Cape Wind Associates about this issue and one person there said quote Cape Wind was not a campaign issue in this election. Neither candidate nor any of the outside groups involved in the election campaigned on the issue. But remember Cape Wind Associates wants the project to proceed and the winning candidate ended up opposing that project. So that's a good way to spin it if the candidate who was opposing what you wanted to do actually wins. So I think it's debatable in terms of the effect Cape Wind may have had. What we do know, Susan, is the battle has been going on for nine years now, but it will come to an end at least by the end of April. That's when Ken Salazar will make his decision as to whether or not that plan goes forward. Right, so perhaps uh, there's a little bit more negative uh, influence on this right now with the, with, the, with the winner of this election. Mm -hmm. Before I let you go, I want to ask you about Senator Murkowski's amendment uh, delaying the EPA regulation of CO2 because today was the day she was to or might have or might still bring that amendment. <laughs> a lot of qualifications. Yeah. I think that's a safe way to put it, Susan. Right. Uh, January 20th, the first day that the Senate is really taking up business, and we're talking here about a debt ceiling bill. There was word that Lisa Murkowski, the ranking member of the Senate Energy Committee, would attach an amendment to this or bring up a separate resolution, essentially blocking the EPA from regulating CO2. I talked to her Energy Committee office late yesterday. Uh, the person I spoke with said there is still no decision as to whether or not this will be an amendment or a resolution, or if she will bring up the prospect of an up or down vote on the idea of cap and trade. So Susan, that's still very much up in the air. And this has really gone back and forth. We were looking at the 20th, then last week word came out that no, no, she'd push it back. But we're right back here with today possibly being the day. The bottom line is we're not going to know until it happens. Right. Well, we'll be waiting to see if that does happen today or if it does get delayed to another day. Also, uh, thank you, Tyler. We're going to also be interviewing uh, Jeff Homestead, who helped craft the original Murkowski Amendment. Uh, he is a, an attorney there at Braceville and Giuliani. He helped craft uh, that amendment, and we'll be speaking with him later today to find out a little bit more about its impact.